So most of the people that I work with come to me confused and frustrated after trying every diet under the sun, every fad weight loss program that comes their way, and they still cannot either lose the weight or lose the weight and keep it off. The sustainability is a big factor. So yo-yo dieting has really become a staple in westernized societies, and it has contributed to weight gain of unprecedented proportions. So in this video, I thought it would be kind of fun and interesting to examine naturally lean, healthy, and long-lived societies and figure out what exactly they're doing differently that has contributed to their success. So if you've been in the plant-based realm for any amount of time, you should be very familiar with the blue zones. These are the particular areas of the world where they find the most centenarians and the most healthy, long-lived, lean, naturally lean people. So this would be places like Okinawa, Japan, Nicoya, Costa Rica, Sardinia, Italy, Loma Linda, California of all places, as well as Ikaria, Greece. So these are diminishing to some degree since they were first studied years back but there are still certain aspects of these civilizations that naturally lend themselves to a happy, healthy, joyful life. I think it will be interesting to look at the similarities between those areas to determine what exactly is it that we are doing so wrong in our society as this sick, overweight population. So for the major six similarities that I'm going to be discussing, the first one is natural movement, sunshine, and fresh air. These people are living, breathing, and existing, for the most part, outdoors and in their natural environment. So they are spending plenty of time in their gardens and in their fields and in their streets because they don't have vehicles most of the time. In Loma Linda, for instance, that one's a little different because they do live in a very westernized society. So they do have cars and they do have different means of transportation and getting around and washing machines and dryers and dishwashers and stoves and all that. But they hold exercise at very high importance. They work it in as a natural part of their day on a daily basis. They prioritize it in such a way that they are getting a similar amount of physical activity as other places like Sardinia, Italy, or Icaria, Greece, that are tending to the sheep in their fields or washing their clothes in the stream or what have you. So what we can do as westernized civilizations is start to incorporate exercise as a natural part of our day. Just standing more in general, moving around, even little bouts of fidgeting is helpful for increasing your resting metabolic rate. So the amount of calories that you burn while you're literally just at rest breathing and your heart's beating and your blood's flowing. So wherever you can fit this in, make it a priority and make it happen because we are moving beings. Since we don't get that natural movement, it's important to incorporate strength training to increase that lean muscle mass, but also getting some cardio every week. And I cannot understate the importance of flexibility, coordination, and balance movement as well. So things like Pilates, yoga, etc. So the second thread that I came across when looking at these different societies were the importance that they place on family and relationships in general. So many of these families live in multi-generational households. So they live in a very tight-knit community where not only are you living with many, many, many other family members, but you also have some friends that you have known since childhood and see on a daily basis all the way through old age and until you're on your deathbed. They are that close to their neighbors and their vendors and all of the people that they come in contact with, they know very intimately and they have very positive relationships with these people because they place such a high importance on that social connectivity. So some things that we can do differently in westernized cultures is to take a step back from our workaholic lives or our busy family schedules with running to soccer practice and dance class and all these different things and just kind of take a step back and realize that just being together is just as important as trying to stuff as many things into our schedule as possible. We so overdo it in this society. So taking time out to um, make room for friends and family should be just as important to you as getting to the gym and meal prepping every week. It should be on a similar weekly basis, just like those other things. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning more about plant-based nutrition and how you can utilize it to improve your health or lose weight. 
So the third thing that we're going to discuss is the importance that they place on purpose or spirituality, however you want to look at it, whether that's a religious meaning or whether it is simply a agnostic or something completely separate than that. It just means that there's something more important than yourself that you are consistently striving to learn more about and develop and appreciate throughout your lifetime. So for a lot of the individuals in the blue zones, this is religion or it's family in general. Being able to be a fourth generation great, great, great grandmother and taking care of your great, great, great granddaughter, that is a huge, huge sense of purpose and meaning for somebody in that situation. So in westernized cultures, this can be as simple as attending a local church on a regular basis or having a book club that you love going to or some kind of meditation practice or, I'm um, sorry, one, one moment. My little friend here likes to get into the, um, the cords, so as long as she doesn't destroy my camera equipment, we can uh, continue. So for example, my version of spirituality and purpose is number one, my meditation practice, but number two, doing things like this, standing in front of this camera and trying to reach out to other individuals to help them incorporate a healthier lifestyle and um, figure out how to implement a plant-based diet is my absolute passion in life because it has helped me turn my life around in so many ways and I watch other people just transform into these beautiful, vibrant creatures that are so capable of taking on any challenge that comes their way. I just, I love everything that this lifestyle has to offer and I find it very purposeful. So whatever that means to you, whatever um, gets you excited every time you wake up in the morning, whatever makes you feel like you've got something bigger than yourself going on that you need to um, address each day is is very impactful in the whole scheme of what it is to be human and what makes us happy and brings us joy on a daily basis. Sorry if she's purring right into the uh, microphone here. So the next similarity I found across each of the blue zones was the importance that they place on rest and relaxation. Something that Americans know very little about for the most part. In many European countries, they actually have a standardized nap time in the afternoon for everybody who is able to, and for the most part, they prioritize it. So the majority of people take a nap in the afternoon and it's just the way that they carry out their day. Businesses shut down, people go home, they lay down, and they take that time to themselves to recover from the busy day and get ready to go back to work and you know, complete the rest of their day. And the Seventh-day Adventists and Loma Linda shut down for an entire day every Sunday and spend that time with family and getting in touch with God and all of the different things that um, help them feel like they're recharging and revamping their energy to start the week. So I think westernized cultures can really take advantage of this area of lifestyle habits because we do not rest and we place a higher importance on getting things done and getting up early in the morning and pulling all-nighters and feeling exhausted all the time. Oh, we look at those people as if they are held on some kind of pedestal in really high regard because, oh, they're suffering so much. They're, they're sacrificing all their sleep to get all this work done and it's just... It's so backwards compared to how we should be taking care of ourselves. So <laughs> doing things like taking an afternoon nap or making absolute sure you prioritize those seven to 10 hours of sleep, whatever it is that you need as an individual is highly conducive to maintaining a lean, healthy body for the long haul. So the next similarity we're going to talk about is near and dear to my heart, and that is that each of these areas follow a mostly plant-based diet. Yes, they do have little amounts of dairy and animal foods, but very, very minimal processed foods. And if they are processed, they were likely processed in their own kitchen. So it's minimally processed as opposed to the highly refined junk that we find in our grocery stores today. So these people eat seasonally, they eat local, they grow a lot of their own food, their soil is a lot different than ours, their food is organic, and most of their staples are things like corn, potatoes, and cereal grains like wheat. Oh, she's so precious. If I don't do this, she literally tries to climb up my body the entire time I'm videotaping. <laughs> 
So this is probably the most important takeaway that we can utilize in westernized societies is the fact that following a natural plant-based pattern in our day-to-day -day life is going to be the utmost important thing we can do for our bodies and our long-term health and weight management. So for more inspiration and ideas on how you can create delicious plant-based meals full of legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and minimal nuts and seeds, you can watch the other videos I will have right here. The last similarity I'm gonna talk about has not really been discussed in the literature that I have come across so far, and that is the lack of reliance on the modern medical system. So we are heavily medicalized as Western societies. We place high, high importance on a healthy lifestyle by maintaining these regular doctor visits and getting our vaccines and getting our antibiotics every time that we have a sniffle and agreeing to invasive procedures and surgeries without really looking into the research to seeing how we can help to heal our body prior to signing off on some of these dangerous and sometimes not very beneficial surgeries and procedures and medications and such. So in the blue zones, they'll typically use natural healing mechanisms. So things like herbs, acupuncture, yoga, fasting. There are so many other ways that most societies have taken care of regular ailments throughout history that you don't have to always jump to the doctor's office when something goes wrong in your body. It can be helpful to take a step back and look at all your options first before you make any dire decisions. And I'm not saying all antibiotics. Okay, okay, I hear you, I hear you. So what this has led to is the fact that these people in the blue zones have grown up with extremely natural, healthy microbiomes. So that is the area where the majority of our immune system takes place. So you really want to be careful taking care of those gut bugs. And the ways that we do that are what we've been discussing so far in this video, exercise, hydration, uh, making sure you get plenty of plant-based nutrition, all of these different things that coincide to create our healthy microbiome. So some things that we do differently in Western societies are this long list of vaccines that we give to our children and antibiotics every time we turn around and medications are very harmful and not being breastfed, C-section deliveries, all of these things will compromise our ability to have a strong, effective immune system and healthy body in turn. All right, so let's just recap. The major takeaways I hope that you gain from this video are the six areas of similarities that I spoke about. So that would be exercise, natural movement first and foremost, social connections, purpose or spirituality, rest and relaxation built directly into each and every day, plant-based nutrition, and not getting so caught up in the medical mill to the extent that it's causing more harm than good. So I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for anybody trying to lose weight, regain their health, and improve their plant-based lifestyle. And if you're interested in that, you can click on the link in the description box below to sign up for a free consultation. Or if you're interested in more free content, make sure you sign up for my email list also in the description box. So I will see you guys in the next one. I hope this video was helpful. Bye! Isn't she cute? Bye guys!